Hey, party people, welcome to another video. How is that for a label? Dawn dishwash soap. How not to destroy your car. Question is, will Dawn dish soap actually destroy your car? Let me answer three basic and essential questions when it comes to Dawn dishwashing soap and washing your car paint. Will it in fact destroy your paint? If it doesn't destroy your paint, as in it's not harmful for your paint, why, if ever, would you want to use it? And thirdly, is there times that you would actually default to this versus a dedicated car wash soap? Let's discuss those three basic topics. And if you choose to hang around towards the end, I'm gonna offer some basic car washing tips that'll help you get more professional result in a more efficient manner. With that said, let's get started. So first question number one, will Dawn destroy your paint? The simple answer is no, it will not. It is completely safe for your car. But the greater question then becomes, let's clarify what safe means. Let's clarify what destroy your paint means. Because I promise you there's endless videos, endless websites, uh, information on the internet that will talk about this silly product Dawn dishwashing soap that you will get conflicting answers to that question. The problem is, is no one or very few people take the time to clarify, okay, why does this destroy your paint? Why would anyone ever say that? Well, we need to go a little deeper. To go a little deeper, we need to discuss dirt. Not all dirt is created equal. So I'm going to simplify this into two areas of types of dirt. One is the basic dirt, like dirt from the soil, dust, that type of dirt that's considered water-soluble dirt. Meaning, if you add water, you agitate it, it's going to basically come clean. Then the other one is what's called grease, oil, or tar-based types of dirt. Therein lies the magic of Dawn dishwashing soap. It is a grease-cutting formulation which is why it's very effective for cleaning your dishes in the kitchen sink. Because often food that you eat and consume in your body has heavy levels of oils and greases in them. So if you used a soap that was not a grease cutter, it would not be very effective on your dishes, hence your car. So you need to define what is your intentions. And by intentions, I mean, okay, you accept your car's dirty, but I promise you most of that dirt is what's considered water soluble dirt. Therefore, you really don't need to overthink it. A dedicated car wash soap that's really made of bright colors, fragrances, and surfactants that will create lots and lots of suds. That will be sufficient enough. It will also be safer, which brings us kind of full circle into this moment as to why is Dawn possibly damaging to your car paint, specifically your clear coat? Well, if you accept that this is a grease cutter, let's examine that and apply a voice of logic, which is this. We, as in most of us, accept that we want some form of protection on your car paint. And that protection usually comes in the form of a wax or a car paint sealant. So this will cut that. It will break it down. It will remove that in the process of you washing your car. If you do that enough times, based on the type of wax or the car paint sealant that is on your car, because they're not all created equal, so you could use this, and if you have the right kind of car wax, the right kind of car paint sealant, it's not going to remove it 100% the first time but you just don't know. Because there's a lot of people, especially what I call YouTube detailers, or guys that really don't know enough to know, they like to hype up, or what I call make a mountain out of a molehill. Something that's trivial, they will inflate it and dramatize it and put the fear of God into you and think, oh my gosh, don't ever use Dawn dishwashing soap on your car because it's gonna destroy it. Well, what it's gonna do is just going to strip the wax. It's going to diminish the wax. It's going to break it down. So if you accept that you want car wax and car paint sealant to protect your car paint, then this would not be your choice. 
But with that said, is it is a simple go-to type of soap that you can use to wash your car. And it's not going to destroy it. It's not going to damage it. It will continue to remove any form of sealants and waxes that may in fact be present on your car. That's what you need to understand. That's what you need to, to accept. With that said is, why would you ever want to use this knowing what I've just told you? Well, let's say you have some grease. Let's say you have a car wax on your car that you want to remove. Well, why would you ever want to remove it? Well, perhaps you want to try a different car wax, a different car paint sealant. And if that's the case and you want to remove the old stuff before you apply the new stuff, did I just say that right? You want to remove the old stuff before you, re, before you apply the new stuff, then you may want to default to a car wash soap like this, which is not a car wash soap. It's actually a dish soap. So that's when you would want to use it. With that said, is we're going to actually demonstrate, my wife and I, washing the car on this car, which is her car, and I'm gonna offer you some tips in the process. Let's get started with the basic car washing tips to help you guys get better results in a more efficient way. In no necessary order, let's examine our tools, our products that we're gonna use. In this video, I am going to, in fact, use Dawn dishwashing soap to wash the car with so that you can see it's not gonna blister the paint or peel it off or completely destroy it. So wash mitt is important. This is my go-to wash mitt. It's a chenille wash mitt. It's made out of microfiber material. It's got all these little fingers. To me, this is the safest wash mitt you can find. I often keep two separate ones color-coded. What I mean by that is that I will reserve one for, let's like, say, for example, washing the wheels or doing the rocker panels. The rocker panels are the lower half of the car. That is the dirtier work. I prefer a dark or a black wash mitt because it will hide the dirt as I wash this in future uses because I don't like it to, to see it getting stained up. I keep a separate wash mitt for the cleaner of the chores of the washing process. Here we have what's called a grit guard. Now a grit guard is a name brand of one of these little contraptions that fit into the bottom of your bucket. The goal of these is to keep the heavier dirt separate from the lighter dirt. So the light or the heavier dirt will settle below this on the bottom of the bucket. So as you dip your wash rag, wash mitt into the bucket repeatedly, the heavier, more aggressive, more damaging particles will settle, settle down below this. So I recommend that. I'm gonna go with that one today. There's different versions of it. Now, why do I have gloves? Well, the gloves, if you're working in cold weather, you'd be surprised how simple these basic rubber gloves can actually keep your hands warmer rather than colder. You wouldn't think it would be effective, but you'd be surprised just these basic rubber, nitrile, whatever you wanna call them, latex gloves, if you have them around the house, I recommend them if you're trying to wash your car in colder weather. Once again, in no necessary order, you see what I'm wearing here? This is a metal ring. Now this man jewelry that I'm wearing is rubber, leather, and vinyl. It's not going to damage your car. So if you're a chick, you may have a bracelet on, a wedding ring on, you need to remove that. Trust me on that. You'll think that you'll be careful, I promise you, you won't because you'll become hyper-focused on what you're doing and you're going to unintentionally scratch or do some kind of damage to your paint that you will regret in the days and months and years moving forward. Then I've got two different types of drying cloths. This is, and you can find all this stuff at the links below. It'll take you to my website where I go into more detail than I am on this video, believe it or not. That's where I write in like 100,000 words or less all the nuances of this moment that you may in fact want to know. So if you are still using a bath towel or some type of cotton towel from your house, throw that away. Two reasons, A, actually I could say three reasons. First off, before they're wet, as in dry, which makes sense, right? You take a dry towel because you want to dry your car off. 
but you will find in many cases that at the beginning, before that towel has become saturated with water, that you tend to just push the water around. Even though it's 100% cotton and it's supposed to be highly absorbent, you'll realize that it's really not that absorbent. Not as, as absorbent as a cloth like this. This is a Meguiar's, uh, I don't remember what it's called. You can find it on my website, but it is a highly recommended uh, it's got great reviews, very absorbent. Not only is it more absorbent, but it's safer, gentler for your car paint. You're not going to introduce scratches that that cotton bath towel that you think is oh so gentle and safe for your body. Well, guess what? Your body is not your car paint. That will actually introduce what is considered wash scratch to your car paint. This will not. It also will not leave lint like that cotton towel. I, I can't believe how many people I still see using cotton bath towels to dry their car off with. I keep a separate microfiber towel, cloth, call it what you want. This will be for the dirtier work, like wiping down the door jams, the trunk jam, inside the gas filler cap, maybe touching up the wheel well lips. That's the area right inside the wheel wells that's still painted. So I keep a separate cloth for that. With that said, I'm going to actually lather this up. I've got my hose and I prefer a nozzle that's very basic, rudimentary, but what I like about it is that I can adjust the spray pattern directly at the tip. I don't have to sit here and manually adjust it. I can just do it whether it's a tight stream or a nice fan. What I do is I fill up the bucket before I introduce your choice in a car wash soap to about a third of the amount or half of the amount of water. Because if you put the car wash soap in immediately, you will find that you will create so much suds that you will not get enough water in it and then the suds are gonna overflow. So I like to fill it up with my half, like I said, a third to a half of what I want. For example, now you can see the grit guard at the bottom and it creates the space for the heavier dirt to fall down. So when you put in your wash mitt, it's going to actually not come in contact with those heavier materials. So there's, believe it or not, I know a lot of you will think I'm overthinking it, but until you've done this for the first time and you'll realize, oh wow, that's what Darren meant. So if you put your soap in there, like I'm doing right now, and it doesn't really require that much, this is not a dedicated soap, so it's not going to give directions on how to use it when it comes to washing your car. Now, if I just go in level 10 or hot, it's gonna create so much foam. See what's happening there? Now I have so much foam, but I don't have enough water. That's why you need to compensate for the ability of this soap to foam up so quickly. Now, dedicated car wash soaps don't all create this much foam, but that's where you need to make adjustments. You can either go in and put your hose at the bottom so it does not create foam, or use a spray pattern that's not gonna create foam, or you shoot the water against the side of the bucket instead of directly down into it. There's many ways to accomplish it. You've gotta figure out what works for you. Okay, party people, here we have, uh, now I have my gloves on it's kind of chilly here in california it is the winter time it's actually raining today believe it or not like i said these will help keep your hands warm even though they're not insulated you will be surprised what i want to do is make sure that there's enough water where i can wash my car while continue to wring it out in between washings or panels of my car what i mean by this if you do not put enough water in there in relation to the suds in there, you will find that there's no water to actually rinse and break loose the dirt so that it can settle below the grit guard. So you need to make sure that you have the composition of the water versus the suds appropriate for what you're trying to do. Right now I'm adding more water to the bucket without creating a bunch of additional suds in the process. So now I've got ample. You'll notice that I put my cloths that I want to keep unsoiled on the container or the top of this bucket so I can put it on the ground without actually putting it on the ground. 
got my wash soap. Now what you want to do is you actually want to blow off, and by blow I mean with water, all the heavier dirt and dust off your car. This is what you would call your pre-rinse. It is not just to get your car wet, it's actually a strategy in getting or blowing off as much of the debris. Now specifically the lower half of your car because we're going to divide the car in half. The lower half, the upper half. As a rule, the lower half will be dirtier. So you want to blow off the car before you introduce your wash mitt to the equation. Also, up in, there's certain areas of your car that will collect extra debris, dirt, that kind of stuff. Up underneath the hood, against the windshield, right up in here is one of those areas, as well as the wiper blades themselves, as well as the back end itself. So you wanna just pay particular attention to those types of areas. Now we've done our pre-rinse. One of my strategies, we separate the car in half. Upper half, lower half, lower half is dirtier. So we want to start with the upper half, work our way around, rinse it off, then we'll attack the lower half. Now as far as how often this mitt goes between here and there will largely be determined based on you, your standards, and how dirty your car is. The dirtier your car is, the more often you'll need to reintroduce it to your wash water. Now, also an added tip, you're not trying to use the dirt that's on your car to polish your paint. What that means is you don't go in level hot and grind the dirt in. You literally just want to use the weight of this, which will be pretty substantial when it's saturated with water. And you glide it across the finish of your car. Now, most of you, if you're watching this, probably are not hardcore car enthusiasts. Because if you were, you probably want to watch this video because it has to do with Dawn dish soap. Most of you that are car enthusiasts are going to be looking for another type of car wash. But surprisingly, this has a lot of what's called lubricity to it, which is a silly word. I get it. It just means lubricants. It glides across this paint very nicely for whatever reason. I don't know what kind of surfactants or what type of emulsion is contained in the Dawn dish soap, but it glides very nicely across your car. Point is, is you're trying to wipe the dirt off. You're not trying to grind it into your paint. So now you just dissect and remember, there's two sides to this. So when you soil up the one side, you don't necessarily have to go back into the wash bucket. You just flip it over and now you have a clean side. Now, when you have soiled up both sides, then you reintroduce it to your wash bucket. Give it a nice little uh, lashing let's it release the dirt the dirt can then settle down below the grit guard and then you just continue with your washing task Okay, party people, I've done the top half of the car, paying special attention to all the nuances, side mirrors, door handles, window trim. Now, if you're a beginner, I promise you, most of you will not realize the difference is all about the details. And what I mean by this is perhaps some of you have seen, if you, as you're driving along the road, someone that clearly has washed the car or attempted to wash the car themselves and they have clearly missed some spots. That's because in order to really do it, you really need to, to dissect your car into a tighter grid, I'll call it a grid, than just the top half versus the bottom half. So literally each panel, and once again, this will be largely based on the color of your car. So on dark colored black cars, it's going to show your result better than on a light colored or a white colored car. So what happens is you will wash, be washing your car and you think you have 
covered the entire panel when in fact you haven't. And then after you dry it off and then you're driving along or you're walking out to your car and you'll realize, oh my gosh, I totally missed these spots of my car. So you really need to dissect it, double check your work, whatever it takes, but panel by panel, dissect it so that you make sure that you have thoroughly washed every section of your car. Now you're gonna hose it off and then I'm gonna come back around and get the lower half, the dirtier half of the car. At this point, the upper half of the car is completely washed and rinsed off. Now I want to attack the lower half. I'm gonna bust out my darker colored wash mitt because this is more dirtier work. Now, if you find that you're not getting enough suds or your suds are starting to diminish, you can actually just re reinvigorate them. I don't know what word I would use. Because some of you will adopt the philosophy, it's called power of suggestion. The more suds you have, the more water you use equals the cleaner your car will be. I get it, but a lot of it is just a mental game. You can actually reintroduce a little bit more soap into your water if you want, reactivate it, so that you have all those wanted, <sighs> wow, that was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't quite, uh, that played out much differently in my head than it did in real life. How about that? So now I'm going to come in and I'm going to wash the lower half. And just in case you don't know, the lower half of your car is what's considered the rocker panels, specifically the side lower half of your car, the rocker panels. Now I'm going to hose those off. Now, if you're not using a dedicated wheel cleaner or wheel brush, this is where you would break out the darker wash mitt. If in fact you are using one, wash your wheels, the sidewalls of your tires. I'm not really a big fan of this, especially if you use dressing on your tires as a regular rule, because then you're gonna goo up this. I generally address the wheels and tires as a separate equation. I've got plenty of videos on that. Now at this point, we're gonna go into the drying mode. And this is where I have two separate cloths. This is my one of my favorite. It's a Meguiar's. And like I said, much safer, no lint, more absorbent, and also the size of it is more manageable. So you can do different ways to dry your car off based on your urgency. For example, if you're working in the direct sun, what you're worried about is spotting. You don't want your car to spot up and create hard water spots. So you can literally drag the cloth along it like this, not overthink it, because really your main focus is to just remove the, the major water so it does not spot up but when it gets wet this is where it becomes cumbersome especially if you have small hands if you're let's say a small dude or a small girl it is difficult to kind of wring out now that i have the major stuff mopped up now i can go in and kind of fine tune it make it look a little more presentable and once again this is where you got to pay attention to the nuances, details of the moment. You see what I got going on there? Some dirt, unwanted dirt. That came from the lower half of the rocker panels because I was not thorough enough in washing the car. It's always gonna happen, which is why I like to keep two different types of cloths. This I'll reserve for the cleaner stuff. This I reserve for the dirtier stuff. So I accept that at the bottom, it's always gonna be dirtier. The more dirt there is, the more likelihood that you'll miss areas during the washing process. So I will take this cloth and I will get not only the rocker panels themselves, but I'm gonna clean what's called, what I call the wheel well lips, this little area that's still painted that's tucked inside the wheel well area. 
it's always going to be some accumulated dirt in there. It's also going to be what I use to wipe the door jams after I've dried the car off. There's going to be plenty of dirt inside the door jams. So get the door jams, the gas filler cap inside of it, as well as the trunk jam, hence two separate cloths. Okay, party people, in 259,000 words or less, there's my little video on Dawn dishwashing soap and my tips on getting better results when it comes to washing your car. Always check the links below. With that said, we'll see you on the next video.